Whenever you want to connect your SQL questions to a dashboard filter, or just give people the option of filtering the results of a SQL question without going into the code, you can add SQL variables to your query. There are two types of SQL variables in Metabase, field filters and basic SQL parameters. The idea is that if you want to add a filter on an actual database column, you should just use a field filter. Check out the in-depth tutorial on field filters if you're not familiar with them. But in rare cases, when you can't map a filter to an actual database column, like when you're filtering a result of a CTE or a union, you can use basic parameters instead, but with some loss in functionality. And that's what this tutorial is about. A refresher on why it's needed. Metabase, currently at least, doesn't parse your SQL queries. It just sends them on the merry way to your database. So Metabase doesn't know that you're, say, working with the accounts table and selecting plan and computing account, so it can't automatically add a filter, like it does with questions built with a query builder. Basic SQL parameters insert a placeholder into your query that is replaced by a specific value passed through the filter widget. Let's see how this works. Here's a query, just outputting the accounts table. I'm going to add a WHERE clause and type plan equals, then double curly brackets, name of the plan, say plan param. And you see a filter widget appeared on top and a variable sidebar open on the right. There are four types of variables. Text, date, and number are the data types for basic parameters, and field filter is the one where you connect a column and let Metabase do its magic. And yes, before you ask, my specific example in the real world would actually be better served by a field filter because I do have a field, a database column plan that I'm filtering on, but I'm keeping this simple for illustration. So selecting text, date, or number determines what the filter widget looks like and what kind of dashboard filters you'll be able to connect this question to. Check out the dashboard filter tutorial for more. I'm going to select text because the plan names are strings. So I now can type basic and run the query and get my data filtered. So I just have a plain input box for values, but if you don't want your users to remember which values they can input, you can change the widget type to say drop down and list the possible values like basic, pro, and business. So now I get a drop-down widget, and don't forget to run the query after picking a filter. If I don't put anything into this widget and try to run the query, I get an error. And here is the most important point to remember with these basic parameters. All they do is substitute a value. So when I typed basic, Metabase took the string and substituted basic into this placeholder. But if I don't have a value, then the query is effectively plans equal nothing, which is invalid SQL. So there are two ways around this. Always require a value or make filters optional. First, require a new value. I can set this in variable settings. Once I select always require a value, I will also need to select the default value. Now I can't remove a value from a widget. There will always be something. Or I can go in the opposite direction and make the filter entirely optional. First, I'm going to go to variable settings and then check require value. But there's still a problem of substituting empty value into the query and getting invalid SQL. But Metabase gives you special syntax for this. So I surround the entire WHERE clause with double square brackets. Now I can remove basic and the query still works. The key point to understand is that Metabase will only remove what's in the square brackets when the filter in the brackets is empty. What remains when the brackets are removed must be valid SQL. If I just put the brackets around the filter itself, it won't work because Metabase only removes this part and the remainder is not valid SQL. So I put in brackets everything that shouldn't run when there is no plan passed into the filter. Now let's say I want to add another filter, a date filter. I can write and created at equals new filter, set the filter to date, 
let me require it with a default date of November 3rd. First, I now have to put the optionality brackets around the first condition and the word end. That's because the WHERE clause should still be in the query when there is no value in the plan filter because I have another filter for the date. But even then, I select a value, I run my date filter, and I get nothing. Why is that? Still the same reason. It just substitutes values. The value is a date. The values in a table are timestamps. So, of course, there is no strict equality. If I just want to select records for a specific date, I can cast the created at field to a date and compare that to the date passed in the filter. There you go. All the records on that date. Note how I used a specific date for a default, not a dynamic, say, whatever day is today. There is a way to pass today's date as default for date filters. But check out our docs to learn more about that. But we'll stop here and let's summarize. Basic SQL variables can be used in queries whenever you can't map a filter to a real database column. To add a parameter, add it in double curly brackets into the query and select text, date, or number type. SQL parameters work by plain query substitution, just replacing the placeholder with filter values. You can set the filter to required in settings, and you can set filter to optional by using special syntax, surrounding your filter with double square brackets. Keep in mind that SQL has to be valid both when the parameter is substituted and when the entire clause in square brackets is removed. Check out our docs and tutorials in the description for more information, and thanks for watching.